welcome to the Stephen and Michael Show. I'm your host, Stephen Davis, and today we'll be introducing our chemistry segment. We'll have various guests, all who contributed to the modern day atom model. First up, all the way from 500 BC, Democritus. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. So what exactly did you do to contribute to the modern day atomic model? So I was the first one to really formulate the idea that there were tiny particles that made up everything in the universe. Huh. So what exactly would those particles have looked like? So I wasn't really sure. I had very simple models. My first yeah. model was a sphere and my other model was a cube. Gotcha. So let's actually pull up a model of your work uh, for the viewers to see. Thank you so much for your con contributions to modern science. Well, thank you for having me on this show. It's a shame that nobody really looked into that after you for the next few centuries, but I guess good thing you did it. Yeah, I really wish that my achievements were noticed during my lifetime. I could see that being a problem. Thanks. Thank you. Welcome to the Stephen and Michael Show. I'm your host, Stephen Davis, and this week, our guest is John Dalton, all the way from 19th century England. Thank you for having me, Steve. So what exactly did you do to contribute to what we now know as the atom today? Well, although I had a very long career in chemistry, I'm most well known for my hard sphere model of the atom okay. and the atomic theory that bears my name. So if you don't mind, we're going to put that up for the viewers right now. John Dalton is known for two major discoveries, his hard sphere model and his atomic theory. Dalton's hard sphere model is fairly simple depicting atoms as small, smooth spheres similar to billiard balls. Dalton's atomic theory has four main points. All matter in the universe is made up of tiny particles called atoms. All atoms of a given element are alike, but are different from the atoms of any other element. Compounds are created when atoms of different elements combine in fixed proportions. A chemical reaction involves a rearrangement of atoms, not a change in the atoms themselves. Thanks for being on the show. Hope to have you back again soon. Thank you very much, Stephen. Please welcome our third guest, also all the way from 19th century England, J.J. Johnson. Thanks, Stephen. Thank you for having me, Stephen. So, what did you do to contribute to what we now know as the atom today? So I had two major advancements in chemistry. The first one was that I created what we know as the plum pudding model. It's a new model of the atom that expanded on John Dalton's model. And I also discovered the electron. So let's put um, diagrams of your findings up for the viewers to see. JJ Thompson is known for discovering the electron and creating the plum pudding model of the atom. Thompson used a device called the cathode ray tube to discover the electron. This created electron beams that were used to display images on TV screens. Thompson also created the plum pudding model of the atom, which included a large positively charged mass with smaller negatively charged particles within, similar to how raisins are suspended in plum pudding. Thanks for coming on the show. Next up, we're actually going to have his student, Ernest Rutherford. All right, tell him I said hi. Thank you very much, Stephen. We'll do. Please welcome our next guest, Ernest Rutherford. Thanks, Peter. Thank you for having me. So, I understand that you conducted one of the most, arguably the most important experiment in all of atomic science. Yes, I conducted the gold foil experiments between the years 1908 and 1913. So how exactly did your experiment work? Well, I think my experiment would be better explained if you put a diagram up for the viewers. All right, let's do it. Ernest Rutherford conducted the gold foil experiments, which proved that atoms are mostly empty space with a dense, positively charged nucleus at the center. Rutherford's experiment consisted of passing alpha particles through a thin sheet of gold foil. Most particles went right through, proving that atoms are mostly empty space. A few were deflected in other directions, proving the existence of a positively charged nucleus. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you very much. Hope to have you here soon. 
Please welcome our next guest, Neil Spohr. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. So from what I understand, you created the model of the atom most closely related to the one we use today. Is that true? Yes, I created the Bohr model of the atom. So we're actually going to pull up a model for the viewers right now. Niels Bohr is known for creating the Bohr model of the atom, also called the planetary model. It is very similar to the model of the atom that we accept today. Bohr's model consists of a positively charged nucleus and different levels of negatively charged electrons. It gained the name planetary model for its resemblance to our solar system. Please welcome our final guest, Edwin Schrodinger. So from how I understand it, you representing the team that created the quantum model? Yeah, a bunch of my uh, fellow teammates, such as uh, previous guest Neil Bohr, have to be in their own time periods right now. Fair enough. So um, we're actually going to pull up a diagram of the quantum model for the viewers, and if you wouldn't mind explaining it? Absolutely. Thank you. Erwin Schrodinger is best known for being part of the team that created the quantum model of the atom. The quantum model is very similar to Bohr's model. The only difference being that instead of different levels of electrons, there are orbitals, or areas of probability, that contain the electrons. This is the model of the atom that is accepted today. Thank you, Mr. Schrodinger, and thank you all our viewers. Please watch the next edition of the Stephen and Michael Chemistry Show. Okay.